All right, so this has been a bit of a long time coming, but I am finally going to replace my old bridge PC that I use for reading and writing disk images. And well, I think you've already seen the motherboard that's going to be going into this case. It's this one with the ISA slots. And yeah, the main reason why I'm choosing this case, which is a thermal take, I think, armor. I really can't tell because, like, the text is very faded and also this phone camera does not have a very good camera. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the reason why I chose this case in specific is because it has pretty much as many drive bays as I can possibly need. Come on, autofocus. There we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five and a quarter inch drive bays, and one three and a half inch external bay. And then, oh, oh yeah, and also, uh, yeah, originally one of the clips for the door broke, so I 3D printed a replacement, and now the door clips shut again. So, yeah, that's nice. Anyway, yeah, going back to the side again, we can see that we have four more internal three and a half inch bays. So, yeah, before we do anything with this case, though, we are going to need to partially disassemble the old system because I do want to use some parts out of it for this new system, even if the colors aren't going to match. So let's just get the thumb screws off, get the top panel off, that to the side, get the side panel off, set that to the side as well. So the main three things that I'm getting out of this are just these drives right here. The CD, DVD, rewritable combo super multi-drive thing, the HDD caddy, which is just IDE. It's very nice to have, though not necessarily intended for hot swapping. And the 1.2 megabyte floppy drive. And yeah, as you can see, I did also have a little case badge that I 3D printed and put there. Anyway. Uh, let's see, where is my screwdriver? There is my screwdriver. Okay, let's get on to removing these things. Actually, I think I might also have to pull the motherboard tray out as well to access the screws on the other side, so let me just remove this side panel as well. I really like this case just because of how easy it is to remove literally everything, leaving just an empty husk of a shell. So let's just remove all that. And it looks like everything except for the floppy drive has already been disconnected because I did already start taking cables out so that then I could test stuff. Yeah, okay, let's pull that out. Pull that out as well, as well. And now we should just be able to pull the motherboard tray right out. Oh wait, front panel connectors. Can't forget about those. Okay, those are unplugged now. Now we can pull out the motherboard tray. Let's see, is there something stuck to it still? Yes, that's something that's still stuck to it is power supply cable. Can't forget about that. And I almost did forget about it. <laughs> ah. A little bit annoying to get out. There we go. Okay, now we can pull the whole thing out. Just get rid of these ribbon cables. And 
there we go, the whole old system. And as you can see, it's just a mini ITX board with a single PCI slot here. And somehow, have you been able to use this as a brake system all the way up until now. So I really haven't been using it as recently as before, but still it's good for future proofing. Wow, this was a mistake to use this locking SATA cable. Okay, let me pry the tab with the screwdriver. There we go, okay. So, yeah, I will not be using this motherboard anymore, but I will be holding on to it because there are still some interesting things I can probably do with it, considering that's a VSC7 that can run Windows 10 32-bit. So, yeah, we'll just put that off to the side like everything else. And, yeah, now we can finally access the screws here. So let's just start unscrewing everything. Let's see. Start the top combo drive. And the interesting thing about all these is that aside from the hard drive caddy, these are all, I'd say, basically new old stock parts that I found in thrift stores and stuff like that over the years and just kind of Frankenstein together as I came across them. And so, yeah, it's just interesting to think about how this particular system has really evolved over the years because originally it was just the CD DVD combo drive, and I would use a three and a half inch floppy drive on USB. And then later on, I added the five and a quarter inch floppy after I found that. And then finally, I got the hard drive caddy. And yeah, now it's all coming out again. I forgot that <laughs> the floppy drive is just really wedged in there. Come on. I don't have any other screws holding it in, do I? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, it is just stuck. Okay, let's just pull out the front panel since we don't have anything else connected. Okay, now we can pull this out. And I will not be transferring this card reader over because I have a different one in mind that I'm going to be using. Okay. So let's just put these aside now. And we'll put this case up. <clears throat> so this is actually the case that I used to use for my main PC for the longest time, but eventually I upgraded and got a newer case, something a little bit smaller <laughs> as well, but yeah, I held on to this one. Let's just pull this panel off. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, unlike the other case that I just showed off, I think I remember that this case does not let you just remove the entire motherboard tray. So instead, we'll just have to do things the old-fashioned way. And, well, <laughs> I guess this, given that this is a far newer case, the new way of just plopping the motherboard straight in. So, let's move these cables. I'll just route them out here for now. Remove this drive rail. Oh wait, yeah, this case uses drive rails, doesn't it? Uh, 
Not sure if that's going to be a problem or not. But we're already this far, so let's just keep going. Uh, dang. There's some funky cable routing happening here. Okay, is that everything? Okay, yeah. And you may also notice that there is no front panel connector for that case. And that is because the front panel connectors live in their own five and a quarter inch drive bay thingy that also happens to be a three and a half inch bay mount. So I'm gonna have two three and a half inch external bays and a whole crap ton of five and a quarter inch ones. So anyway, with all those routed out of the way, we can now put the motherboard in. So this board already has CPU and RAM and everything because I bought it as part of a bundle of all of that. Let's just put it in. Oh wait, being a full ATX motherboard, I'm also gonna have to, oh, never mind it. Already has the mounting stuff in. Okay. Line up the screws. Okay. And now let's just grab some motherboard screws. Main board screws fixed, okay. while since I've built a PC in an actual case instead of just throwing it on the plastic folding table test bench thing. So let's do the corners first. Mm -hmm. Why is the screw not tightening? this case use different screw sizes? I think it might just use standard case screws then. Okay. Let me pull this out because the screw is kind of stuck in there right now. Okay. Put that back. Put this back in. these screws instead. Make sure that the threading is the same because some of these are old screws. Okay, should be the same. Yeah, these go in far better. Okay. And because this is a archiver system that's gonna mostly be handling drives and those drives tend to be pretty 12 volt heavy, we are gonna be using a relatively modern power supply. And that power supply in question is actually just the one that I normally use for all my testing because it has both a very strong 5 volt and 12 volt rail. What's that? I think that's just the sticker residue. And yeah, that does mean that if I am going to do more experiments with like, say, an AMD Athlon board, 
I will have to be a little bit more careful about my power supply choice because the other PSUs that I have aren't quite so strong on the 5 volt rails and I know the Athlon boards do like their 5 volt rails. Okay, I think that should be, yep, everything is secure. Let's just make sure that the screws are tight now. And I do not have an IO shield for this board either, so that's just going to have to stay off. Okay. So, let's go ahead and connect this fan as well. Is that a little bit hard to see with the camera. Oh, uh, where's my flashlight? There's my flashlight. Second fan connector. Will it reach? It barely does not reach. Fun. Okay. We're gonna have to reroute the fan connector then. Okay then. <laughs> um, I guess we'll just need a... Wait, actually, wait, wait, wait. Yes, we can still reroute the fan connector. We'll have it go this way instead, through the other five and a quarter inch bay, the vertical one, that I probably won't be using. It won't be as pretty with the cable hanging out like this, but... Hmm. Actually, before we do that... Right. Let's see if I have any other fans that have longer cables. That is... A pretty short cable. Yeah, this will do. Okay. So, we won't... <laughs> be getting a fan with blue lights anymore, but that's not particularly what I'm aiming for here, so I'll just go ahead and remove this one. Uh, do I have to remove the drive bay? Yeah, I'm going to have to remove the drive bay. I'm just going to take off this door for now. It's getting annoying. Right off the hinges. Okay. Get this out. Wait. Can't I just slide this back in and wrap the cable like that? Still too short. Okay, never mind. Also, apologies if I keep bumping the tripod at this point. Uh, I'm just gonna move the entire camera instead. Okay, give me a moment. I'm just gonna put this whole thing face down. <sighs> okay, so that took a whole lot longer than it had any right to <laughs> take, but I finally got that new case fan in. I really should have gotten more of those nice rubber fan mount things instead, but Oh well, I just had to use screws this time. And now... Now I can... get the fan cable rounded over. There we go. I'll just leave some more lights to connect her off to the side, I guess. Nothing else that I can do with it. And then the rest of this can just tuck way into the back. Or actually, just right into here. Okay, and... 
Yeah, I think let's go ahead and start mounting stuff into the drive bays. So, let's see. Let's start with the power stuff. Let's also take out these down here. Where'd that go? There it is. And I think I should be able to still just screw the drives in, I think. Do I really need to use drive rails? It's starting to look like I might. Uh, yeah, okay. Looks like drive rails are a must. Uh, give me a moment, I will see if I can find them. <laughs> Okay, so it has now been another day yet again. I spent all of yesterday printing out more of these drive brackets or rails. And now everything uses them except for this, the hard drive caddy, because this one does not have screw holes lining up with the bracket. And so instead, for this one, I will be using the original brackets instead because they have the plastic peg that can go into the hole. Anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and start putting things together. And, oh, and also, one more thing. New addition to the Archiver PC, which was not in the previous build, this is a 360K Alps Mechanism 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive. This would have been used as, like, the floppy drive in some of IBM's later model PCs that had, you know, slimline drives. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go ahead and... Oh, and it also came with its own drive brackets, but these don't fit, so I can't use them. So let's go ahead and take out this blank here, because we'll need all five drive bays. And let's go ahead and, well before we do that actually, I'm going to put something to fill this area. That will be, where is it? I had it over here. There it is. This combined three and a half inch drive plus card reader. And the card reader half uses USB, so I don't really have that many USB headers. There's only one header on the motherboard itself, so I'm going to be using a PCI USB card as well. And also, the floppy drive itself won't be doing anything yet because I do need to get a USB adapter for it because this computer, unfortunately, does not seem to want to use my quad floppy controller. So, yeah. It's not that big of a deal, but slightly annoying that I can't just stick it straight in. So let's just route the cable through here.
slide it in. Now we can put screws in. Where do I put the screws? There's the screws. See, I think I should be able to use the same CD-ROM set screws. Oh, I just realized I shouldn't have put the drive rails on before I put the three and a half inch drive in because, oh, now that blocks the mounting holes. I got to get to the screw holes here. Okay, let's just take this off again. And we're only going to really need to put screws on one side. Because, yeah. I mean, I could put... Oh. I could put screws on both sides, but... I don't know. It's a little bit hard to reach, I guess. Okay, let's just put the screw... Here first, and then just stick the screwdriver through this hole. There we go. And then second screw. Ah. There we go. Okay, now we can put the drive rails back on. Clearly, you are watching some top quality content. Clearly, this thing was planned out fully beforehand. <laughs> okay. And... This plug back in. I'm pretty sure that that is the right thing, but just in case, I'm gonna get my multimeter, check continuity. All I got to do is check ground. Okay, continuity mode. Okay, so that's the ground pin. Okay. I put it in correctly, so that is good. Now we can finally start <laughs> assembling everything into the case like I was originally going to do before I got completely sidetracked by the whole drive rail thing. Now, let's put these up here. Okay, so to start, let's go ahead and just wrap that through there. There we go. And then we can just put it straight in. Just slide it in. Oh, what's it getting stuck on now? There we go. Okay, that is secure. And I think what I want to do here is kind of put it in a sort of zebra stripe pattern. So we'll alternate between black and white. And that should make for a nice little pattern of things. Hmm. 
with the exception of this. This is beige. I'll just have beige on the bottom. But everything else is either black or white. So it makes for a nice visually appealing pattern. At least visually appealing to me. Okay, and now we just gotta put these peg-based drive rails onto this one. And then we just slide it right in. Is it hitting something? Oh, it's hitting the motherboard itself. Ah! Okay. Got to reorder some stuff. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna have to have it up here because that way it won't hit against anything. Why this has to be so long? So, it won't be a perfect black-white pattern, but it'll do. Yeah, now that fits. I guess since the pattern is already broken, let's just... Ow. We'll just instead have everything that is lighter colored in the middle here. And then black on the very bottom again, so it'll just sandwich everything else. Oh, is this hitting the motherboard too? Oh, it is. Ah. Somehow this case is still, like, barely too small. Okay, that clears things. And I originally wanted to have the floppy drives next to each other, but I guess I won't be able to. Okay, let's see if this hits anything. It does. Okay, let's see what spots have enough clearance to not hit anything. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay. I already filled all the spots that don't clear things. Um, I guess I can just put it in this vertical drive bay instead. It will end up blocking the hard drive bays, but at this point, whatever. <laughs> okay, what's it getting stuck on now? Everything is getting caught on each other. Drive rail guides. Okay, let's just bend them out a tiny bit. Now we should be able to put this in. And here I thought that with a big case, it wasn't gonna cause any issue. But instead I have all the issues still. Okay, that fits in. And I guess with the window for the case in, it'll be interesting to see because I can actually watch the spindle motor spin. So 
Yeah, I guess that's not that bad of a thought. Then. Okay. So we'll take this back out for now, because we will have to put in the hard drive cage, and it's kind of blocking the whole thing right now. Oh wait, hard drive cage. I just realized it might block the hard drive from, from being fully in. Especially if it's... Hmm. What to do? Let's see. There is also this bottom bay here. But I don't really want to put... Let's see. If I put this in... Okay, yeah, if I put a hard drive in, it's going to completely block the side bay. So... Hmm. Can I put the hard drive bay in any other way? No, it looks like it only goes in one way. Okay. All right, then. I guess I will have to put this in to the bottom bay here. Let me pan it down a bit. This case has been nothing but disappointment for me so far. I'm going to have to take this out. There we go, now you can actually see what I'm doing. So you just gotta snap this part out here. And that is dusty down there. I think I'm gonna probably real quick spray it out. Come on, come out. Hey. Is this you? There we go. Now let's just bend these to the side. Like, let's see. If it fits, then I don't have to worry about bending it out. Okay, it fits. One of the main reasons why I didn't want to put this floppy drive down here is because that is pretty much where all the dust in this case likes to collect. And it's stuck. Fun. How much is stuck on? Are you kidding me? Okay, hold on a moment. I gotta pause the video. All right. And with the magic of video editing and a few more hours of on and off work, I have fully assembled this. Obviously, cable management can probably be better, but honestly, at this point, it's really not that much about aesthetics. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and try turning this thing on. go. Okay, we got life. And I'll have to configure the floppy drives as well. So, very end of the drive, that's the 360k one, so that's going to be our drive A, and our drive B will be 1.2 meg. And it detects our Combo drive, let me just zoom in a bit there. So I think that's all good. 
onboard IDE, we have the secondary channel still disabled because I was doing more MFM drive testing. Um, it does look like our LEDs for power and hard drive might be reversed. So let me just save and exit out of the BIOS and then we'll flip the polarity around for them. There we go. Now we got lights. And for additional testing, let's go ahead and try booting off a DVD or something. Let's see. What do I have here? Let's do Megaya 8 live, because that is what I like to use. Sure that everything is set correctly. I do wonder, because this thing doesn't have any jacks for AC97 audio, so that must only be the rear jacks. And let's go to the regular bow screen, see what that says. Yeah, I don't care that there's no AD cable or AD conductor cable installed. Okay, let's see if it's able to boot or not. And if you hear tapping, that's just my dog. He's just kind of wandering around my room right now. Why is it not booting? Come on not frozen. I can still get responses from NumLock by toggling it on and off. Let's see. Come on, why aren't you booting? I also find it a little bit odd that I'm not getting any floppy drive seeking sounds. Because they're supposed to be. Hmm. Why is it not booting? Keeps locking up right here. Oh wait, I think I know why. I have one of the drives manually configured in the BIOS still from once again when I was testing MFM drive, so it must be trying to access that drive but seeing nothing. And I think that's why it's locking up. So let's just go back into BIOS again. So 
Secondary master. Yep, there we go. We'll just turn that to auto for both. Text to go to nothing. Set an exit. Okay. And I do have a mouse connected over USB right here. Though the audio jacks and firewire both are not hooked up to anything right now. I do have a firewire card, but I will not be installing it for now. Floppy disk now. Oh, do I have them flipped around? Let's see. Should be working. Or do I have the floppy? I think I might have the <laughs> floppy controller also disabled. Uh, on port for cryo. FTC. Oh, it is enabled. Okay, that's strange. Starting. Let's unplug one of them for now. Floppy just fell still. Hmm. Okay, give me a moment. Okay, I got things fixed. Turns out that it was just the floppy cable on the motherboard itself being a little bit loose. So let's start with trying to boot off floppy instead, just to confirm that all that works. And if it does work, then we should be able to boot into DOS 5. And you can hear it running. And there we go. So we have successfully booted into that. So let's go ahead and remove the disk and reboot. And this time we'll start booting from the live CD. So despite this whole endeavor being more than a little bit annoying, in the end, aside from that one missing drive door, or drive cover, it's worked. So, yep, give it a moment, it's about to boot from CD. And there we go, we can just go ahead and boot straight away. And once we're into the operating system as well, we can go ahead and see what else we can access. This may take a while, so I'll just skip ahead to when it's done booting. Okay, so we are now fully booted into Megaya, and I've also gone ahead and added a USB Wi-Fi dongle, so might as well just test a little bit more functionality and see what we can do browsing the web a bit. 